At other times, he made himself red hot by lying in a bath of fire and then burned up all that he touched. Deucalion now begged the other Argonauts to help him to destroy Talos, but not even Heracles could think how to do it. Then Medea said, only with the help of magic and by great guile can we overcome Talos, but do just as I say and all will be well. So when she had instructed them, they drew near to the island and presently Talos appeared, glowing red with heat, a great rock ready in his hands. Then, first of all, Orpheus played his sweetest strains, so that Talos paused uncertain while Medea spoke to him. Noble Talos, said she, I am Medea the Rich, and I can make you king of the world and ruler even over the immortals if you will make me your queen. How can you do that? rumbled the giant doubtfully. Is it not true, asked Medea, that you have but one vein in your body, running from neck to heel, and that instead of blood it contains ichor, the immortal liquid which flows in the veins of the immortals? Talos nodded doubtfully, and Medea went on. Although ichor flows in your vein, you are not immortal, but I, by my magic arts, can make you so if you will let me land safely with one follower. Talos agreed to this, and Medea landed with Poeus, who was the smallest man among the Argonauts. If Heracles or Theseus had tried to step ashore, Talos might have suspected some plot, but little Poeus could arouse nobody's suspicion. And Talos did not know that he was one of the most skilled archers living, nor that Heracles had lent him his bow and arrows. Once on the shore, Poeus wandered away and settled himself quietly out of sight among the rocks. But Medea took a sickle with a blade of brass and began to gather herbs with which to make a magic brew. She mixed them in a cauldron, squeezing the milk-white juices from them, and singing an incantation. Next, she stripped off her clothes, bound up her jet-black hair with wreaths of ivy, and bent over the cauldron, chopping the herbs and roots, and singing wildly.